I told you I'm not the king of short answers. <laughs> the better question. <laughs> I was asking the Lord, what, what should I teach on this year? And the title of my class for worship school was Lucifer. And <laughs> so they, you know, oftentimes they ask you for a visual for what picture you'd like to put up on the board behind you. And I was like, well, do you have a picture of Satan? Because, um, you know, obviously the temptation, um, especially when it comes to worship, is to actually keep the glory that you are meant to reflect and give back. And I think that Revelation gives us a beautiful example of the elders continually casting their crowns. Well, why were they continually casting their crowns? Because glory was continually placed on their heads. And I think that the revelation in that for me is that, especially as a worship leader, I am on a stage and it is so easy to, in those moments of when you're doing great or when you are you know, feeling the presence of God in the room to absorb, kind of like Gollum in Lord of the Rings, when the ring, my precious, you know, to absorb or think that it's all you. Um, my husband has an amazing example he uses uh, where an elephant and a mouse on his back crossed a bridge, uh, an old rickety bridge, and they got to the other side and, and the mouse on the elephant's back said, we sure shook that bridge, didn't we? And I think that's the joke is that, you know, we are the children of God and he loves us so much, um, but it ain't about us and it isn't, you know, anything to do with us in a big way. Um, I have kids myself and they do wonderful things and you know, I'm proud of them. And I think God as a father, like he's very proud of us and he's just a total dad. Um, but when it comes to glory, we have to be so careful to, not, to not absorb glory and fame.